Okay, so this is Tricent or, um, or Fortec. So as if you were in the early, earlier session, we talked about tricuspid regurgitation is predominantly a consequence of RV enlargement and anterior posterior dilatation. So this is a device that sort of um, answers that. So this is a normal tricuspid valve and this is um, the anterior, posterior, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, and septal leaflet. And when it dilates, it, it dilates um, in the anterior posterior direction. So the tricinch is a basically a coil that um, is anchored by a stent that's down in the IVC. And the coil is uh, placed in the uh, pericardial space. It's a 25 French outer diameter steerable catheter um, that goes up the IVC. So again, it's a single transmural implant. Um, and it's on the ventricular epicardial, uh, epicardium. And again, it, it uh, uh, targets the um, annular, uh, the anterior posterior uh, dilatation. So this is a video of it. As you can see, it's coming up into the right atrium. You go right at the uh, junction of the anterior and posterior leaflet and, uh, um, and puncture into the epicardial space. There's this coil that is then cinched down and you watch it under echo and the tension, the amount of tension you put on it depends on how much uh, the TR goes away. So basically when you get to the result that you would like, you then deploy the stent and the coil is um, on the stent and then you release the stent and uh, remove the catheter. So um, the first thing that you have to do, though, is you have to get right atrial appendage access, and you do this under fluoroscopy, and you insert a, a microcatheter that goes into the pleural space, and the reason, into, excuse me, the pericardial space, hopefully not into the pleural space, <laughs> into the pericardial space, and you inject uh, CO2, and this allows you to be able to see um, into the pericardial space so that you can make your uh, a puncture into the uh, epicardial space. You then bring up the device and as you can see there's a, uh, a needle on the, the end of it and you inject into or you puncture into the pericardial space and then you deploy the coil into that pericardial space. The stent can be repositioned so you don't um, have to, uh, you obviously don't deploy it and you reposition it based on the tension and how much TR um, is, is reduced. And then once you're comfortable with the amount of TR that's reduced, you can then release the uh, stent. You do have a catheter up um, because you do need to inject the uh, right coronary artery to make sure that when you cinch that uh, you're not um, uh, impacting on the uh, right coronary artery, that it doesn't spasm or, or, or anything like that, or you'll need to release the uh, tension. So this is an EFS study um, here in the U.S. There are, I believe, uh, 10, uh, 10 sites um, that are doing it with the uh, primary endpoint being all-cause mortality at 30 days. So this was the first patient that was done. You can see that um, there was uh, uh, quite a bit of TR, and then after the uh, six-month follow-up, the TR went from severe to moderate. And then the second patient went, um, was severe TR that then went to mild at one year follow-up. On CT, the baseline CT um, showed an annular dilatation of the, uh, of the tricuspid valve, but then after a 30 day, there was a decrease in the annular size. So basically this is an EFS trial that is currently enrolling, although slow going, but currently enrolling and uh, uh, results are yet to, to be followed. <laughs>